How's it going everybody? It's Warm. Welcome back to my channel, The Cosmic Wonder, where we talk all things Marvel and everything relating to the MCU. And today we have some pretty big details revealed about some of Marvel's Phase 4 projects, including a huge plot detail about Thor, Love and Thunder revealed by Natalie Portman herself. And we also have some Spider-Man 3 news, which of course always excites everybody, especially with the news that the multiverse is going to probably play a very prominent role in Spider-Man 3. And it looks like we're going to be getting the official title of Spider-Man 3 in the MCU pretty soon and I'll break down everything you need to know in this video. If you're new be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest MCU news and so you can enter this week's giveaway for a chance to win a Loki Funko Pop. So, so far, all the things we know about Thor Love and Thunder lead us to believe that this movie is going to be absolutely crazy. Yes, even crazier than Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> Taika Waititi has already confirmed that space sharks are going to be a part of Thor Love and Thunder. He also himself said that the movie is going to be insane and more over the top than Thor Ragnarok. He said that it's like he asked a bunch of kids for ideas about the movie and said yes to all of them. Chris Hemsworth also had a lot of really good things to say about the script as well. In one interview he said, after reading the script, I can say that I am very excited. For sure there will be a lot of love and a lot of lightning in this production as he laughs. I'm glad that after all that happened in Avengers Endgame, I'm still part of the Marvel Universe and we can continue the story of Thor. Of course, I can't tell you anything about the plot, but to satisfy your curiosity, I'll say that I had a lot more fun reading the script than on Thor Ragnarok, and that proves something, because this movie was brilliant. So according to Chris Hemsworth, this movie is already better than Thor Ragnarok, which is saying something because that movie was amazing. But also according to Taika Waititi and Chris Hemsworth, this movie is going to have a lot of romance in it. And that's of course where Jane Foster returns. Now we already know that she's going to be a female Thor in the movie and that she's going to be worthy enough to lift the hammer. But Natalie Portman has recently revealed a pretty big plot about Thor Love and Thunder that involves her and Jane Foster's story. Yesterday, Natalie Portman sat down with Yahoo.com to discuss her new children's book and major moments of her career. And of course, while she was doing the interview with Yahoo, they asked her if she could reveal anything about Thor Love and Thunder, in which she actually did give us a pretty big plot point about the movie. She said, I can't tell you that much. I'm really excited. I'm starting to train to get muscles. If there can be all these female superheroes, the more of them they are, the better it is. I'm trying to think. It's based on the graphic novel of the mighty Thor. She's going through cancer treatment and is a superhero on the side. This is actually really big. Natalie Portman tells us in the interview that the movie is going to be based off of the novel, The Mighty Thor, and her character is going to have breast cancer just like in the comics. Now, cancer is actually a pretty big part of Jane Foster becoming worthy to lift Mjolnir in the comics, and in the comics, Thor actually becomes unworthy. So in the story, Jane Foster gets breast cancer and Thor gets deemed no longer worthy to wield Mjolnir and the hammer was left abandoned on the moon. The frost giants then invade Earth and a new mighty Thor arrives to save the day. Now for a very long time, for about seven issues, her identity was a mystery. And eventually Thor would go and try to reclaim Mjolnir and reclaim the title of Thor. But after seeing her in action, he acknowledges that she is indeed worthy. Now the actual Thor goes on to try and figure out who this new Thor is for a pretty long time. And he kind of does suspect that it is Jane Foster, but he ends up ruling her out considering the fact that she's going through chemotherapy and he considers her too weak to beat Thor. Eventually enough happens and Thor begs the new Thor to reveal who she is and she eventually does tell him that it is her, Jane Foster. Now the only problem here is that every time Jane Foster turns into Thor, the transformation process makes her cancer worse. When she turns into Thor, it actually gets rid of all of the toxins in her body and in doing so gets rid of the chemotherapy treatment. So her being Thor is actually killing her. However, when Thor finally does find out who she is, she says, I am Dr. Jane Foster, and I will not stop being the mighty Thor, even though it is killing me. 
She continues to go on as Thor, and she also goes on to become an Avenger. She ends up working with Doctor Stephen Strange to heal some of her patients. But at one point, Doctor Strange examines her and tells her that if she becomes Thor one more time, it'll kill her. However, when Mangog attacks Asgard, she turns into Thor again anyways. And Doctor Strange ended up being right. She ends up sacrificing Mjolnir and her life to defeat Mangog. So ultimately, the cancer that Jane Foster has and the combination of her being Thor Thor as well do end up killing her, so there is a possibility that we could see Jane Foster die in the MCU. Now, oftentimes in the comics, death isn't really that permanent, and Odin's son, aka the original Thor, and Odin himself find a way to resurrect her. Thor Odin's son ends up becoming worthy again and goes on to take on the mantle of Thor. Meanwhile, Jane Foster decides to go on and focus on her health, and eventually her cancer does go into remission. So there is a good chance that Jane Foster could make it out of Thor Love and Thunder alive, but if she does in fact die, there's a good chance that she'll stay dead. We've already had plenty of opportunities for people to be resurrected in Avengers Endgame. After the fight with Thanos, the Avengers had the Infinity Stones, and if they really wanted to, they could have had somebody extremely powerful, like Captain Marvel, use the stones to bring back Tony, to bring back Vision, and any others that they may have lost with the exception of Black Widow because she was the sacrifice for the Soul Stone. But with WandaVision coming out and bringing Vision back in a really weird way, anything's possible at this point in time. But let's also consider the fact that we may be seeing an unworthy Thor in Thor Love and Thunder. Now of course the movies don't always copy the comics 100% or nearly 50% most of the time, but Natalie Portman did say that the movie is going to be based off of the Mighty Thor, and in the Mighty Thor, Thor is unworthy for a good majority of the time. Now we kind of saw Thor go through this already in Avengers Endgame. Thor was kind of a mess in Avengers Endgame, and he himself didn't think he was worthy until he went back in time and was able to lift Mjolnir. <laughs> So it could be that Thor has already gone through the unworthy phase and we're just going to pick up from this in Thor Love and Thunder or he could go through a phase where he is completely unworthy to lift up the hammer. And that could be how Jane Foster ends up becoming Thor. And it also could be possible that Jane Foster having cancer is what brings Thor and Jane back together. It also could be why they broke up. She could have broke it off with Thor because she was sick. But after Avengers Endgame, where Thor goes off and tries to find himself, he could discover that what he truly wants is a relationship, in which he would track down Jane and try to start a relationship again. And who knows, perhaps Marvel could even do a reverse where Jane becoming Thor actually cures her of her cancer entirely. After all, the direction that Marvel's going, they'll probably want Natalie Portman to stick around in the MCU as a Jane Foster Thor for a pretty long time. So lots of romance coming, lots of crazy, insane things coming for Thor Love and Thunder. And to top this video off, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have some really awesome Spider-Man 3 news. It looks like Spider-Man 3 is going to start filming in just a little over a week from now. There have been notes going up around parking lots in New York stating that pretty soon parking is going to be closed due to filming. Now on this sign it says shoot day and date Friday 10-16-2020, shoot time 6am to 7pm. And the project's name is Serenity. Now, which has already been confirmed to be the working title for Spider-Man 3. Now, this isn't the official title for Spider-Man 3, it's just the working title, and they do this for every Marvel movie. So this is great news, we're going to find out a lot more about Spider-Man 3 very, very soon when they start shooting, including, most likely, what is going to be the official title of the movie. Tom Holland has actually done an exceptional job at not giving away any spoilers for the movie yet. But once filming starts, we're definitely going to be getting some leaks as there are going to be people who are going to sneak some photos and of course videos. So a lot more for Spider-Man 3 coming soon. But in the meantime, let me know what you think about this major plot detail for Thor Love and Thunder. And do you think that Natalie Portman's Jane Foster is going to die? Let me know your thoughts about Thor Love and Thunder and Spider-Man 3 in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on anything relating to the MCU. For live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.